Today, we're going to address the seven biblical principles of development and fundraising. Trust me, these principles could change the way you look at money and giving forever. Stay tuned. About a decade ago, I was visiting the home of a very dear friend that I've known for over 40 years. He's done quite well in business and he began showing me pictures of a race car he intended to purchase. I started to feel uncomfortable as he was gushing over how much money he had planned to spend on that vehicle that he was calling his toy. Because we were close friends, I said to him, Joe, why don't you take that money and instead invest it in missions work? where it will produce fruit and a return on investment that will be eternal. He didn't say anything more and we started another conversation down a different path. About six months later, he again had me in his home. I noticed that he was a little excited and asked me to come into his office. He proceeded to show me a steering wheel that was connected to an electronic car racing game. The wheel and game probably didn't cost more than $100. He then told me that he really took what I said to heart and that he bought the steering wheel and game and put the rest of the money he was going to use on the car into missions work. I don't know when I'd seen him so delighted. Learning to give and give generously is never easy for anyone, especially the rich. But Joe learned a valuable lesson and I was happy to play a role in his learning how to invest eternally. There are seven biblical principles of development and fundraising. They are as follows. Principle number one, God owns everything. In the Bible, Genesis 1-1 said, God is the creator of all that exists. He's the king of kings, the alpha, the omega, and the beginning and the end. Psalm 50, 10 through 12 states, For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. There isn't anything on earth that God doesn't own. Psalm 24, 1 also states, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, and not just a tithe or a tenth, God owns it all. In addition, He also retains ownership of his creation. Leviticus 25, 23 points that out clearly. Principle number two, we are stewards of those resources. Genesis 1, 26 says, God made human beings responsible for his creation. We don't own anything. God owns it all, but we are his stewards. We care for all the things on this earth, including cars, houses, clothes, our kids. The parable of the talents in Matthew 25, 14, 30 explains that God expects us to use this for his glory. If you fail to use wisely what is his, he could take it away and give it to someone who does care for it. Principle number three. Money and possessions are a powerful temptation. As a nonprofit leader, you work with large donors and people of means. You have a tremendous opportunity to come alongside and help teach them certain principles about money. For example, Luke 12, 15 states, Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for a man's life did not consist in the abundance of possessions. It's important for our partners to realize that money can be a great temptation and can distract from what's truly important in life, like a relationship with God, like a spouse and kids. This is confirmed in Luke 18, 24, when it says how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. It's important to understand that money alone is not bad, and having money is not bad. It is the love of money that's bad. When gaining wealth and possessions overrides all other desires, that's when it gets bad. 1 Timothy 6, 9 through 10 says, For the love of money is the root of all evil. 
Principle number four, God intends for us to give. Having money is not a bad thing, but God desires that we give back a portion of what he's given to us. The Bible recommends 10%. That's just a small portion that actually tests our faith and trust in him. In reality, he he allows us to keep 90% of our possessions. We had a donor to our ministry who was already very generous. Go to a conference on giving generously. She came back and shared with me a principle that changed her life forever. She stated, when I left for the conference, I was content giving away 10% and living on 90%. After hearing people's stories of generosity, I decided to figure out how I could live on 10% and give the 90% away. And she did for the remaining portion of her life until she passed away in 2011. In keeping with this principle, Leviticus 27.30 states a tithe of everything from the land belongs to the Lord. A tremendous example of that is in Mark 12, 43, 44, stating the widow's might. A very poor woman gave all that she had and gave it back to the Lord. And she did it in secrecy, not trying to draw attention to herself or the sacrifice. In contrast, church leaders at the time gave money and bragged about it but in reality only gave a very small portion of their possessions. One of my favorite verses is Luke 12, 33 through 34. In it, it says, for where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. Some mistakenly cite this as where your heart is, that's where your treasure will be. It sounds so right, but in reality, people get involved in the areas where they give. For example, I was never interested in Microsoft, Intel, AT&T until I owned stock in the companies. Once I did, I was interested in who the leaders were and how they were making their decisions. Those leading with their heart often give opinions, but not money. Principle number five, not giving is robbing God. When an individual doesn't give to God, He or she is actually robbing God since God owns it all. Malachi 3, 8 through 10 said, Will you rob God? Then you rob me. The same verses show us how God wants us to give. It states, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Tithing is God's way of seeing whether and how much We love him and trust in him for our provisions. Principle number six, God loves a cheerful giver. God desires for us to give back to him and even teaches us to give, but not give begrudgingly or out of of compulsion. But God wants us to give hilariously as the Bible states. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 7 shows us the consequences of not giving generously, but also shows what kind of attitude he wants us to have in our giving. Whoever sows sparingly also reaps sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. God loves a cheerful giver. Principle number seven. God demonstrates faith. One of the greatest examples of faith giving comes from the book of 2 Corinthians chapters 8 and 9. The Apostle Paul is writing the Corinthians but using the Macedonian people as an example. They lived in extreme poverty, yet they were joyous because they gave all they had to the Lord and God blessed them. It's one of the greatest examples in Scripture of what we call faith promise giving. 2 Corinthians 8, 2 highlights this. Although they were in extreme poverty, the Macedonians demonstrated their faith by contributing generously to others. They gave as much as they were able and beyond their ability. The Bible gives us tremendous examples of how to give and how to give generously. We learn that you can't outgive God. The more you give, the more you get if it's according to his will and plans. 
You can learn much from Scripture, and your major donor partners can learn from you as well. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, let me know by giving it a thumbs up and leave a comment below if there were things that you especially liked or if there's topics you'd like to address. And let this community of life changers know you're a part of making a difference in our world. If you wish to watch future videos in this channel, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified immediately of the release of the next video. If you wish to follow me on Instagram, go to Jim W. Dempsey, or if you have questions, go to fundraisingmasterminds.net forward slash Jim and Java. If you wish to be part of a community of like-minded leaders, join our Life Changers group on Facebook. If you want to know what to do and what to say on an appointment with a major donor, watch this video and take your development efforts to the next level. As always, I wish you the best as you strive to become fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.